Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss an important topic, power dissipation from the subject VLSA design. First, let us see some important basic definitions. Instantaneous power, energy and average power. So, instantaneous power means it is the product of current through the element and voltage across the element. So, it is given by P of T equal to I of T into V of T. Here P is the power, I is the current and V is the voltage. Then next, energy. So, energy is the time integral of the instantaneous power. So, already we have seen instantaneous power. If we take time integration means then it is called as energy. Then average power. So average power is given by energy divided by time. So that is 1 by t integral 0 to t p of t into dt. Next, let, let us see sources of power dissipation. So there are two types of power dissipation. One is static power dissipation and another one is dynamic power dissipation. So, total power dissipation is given by dynamic power dissipation plus static power dissipation. Now, let us see what are the causes for static power dissipation. First one is subthreshold leakage through off transistors. Second one, gate leakage through gate dielectric. Third one is junction leakage from source or drain diffusion. And fourth one is contention current in ratio circuits. The next Causes for dynamic power dissipation, charging and discharging load capacitance, then short circuit current while both PMOS and NMOS tracks are partially on. So these are the sources of power dissipation, both static power dissipation and dynamic power dissipation. So the equation is given as static power dissipation, static power P static is equal to subthreshold leakage current plus gate leakage current plus junction leakage current plus contention current into VDD. Then dynamic power dissipation is given by P dynamic equal to switching current power plus short circuit power. So swing power is due to the charging and discharging of capacitance and the second one is short circuit power. So the sum of switching power and short circuit power will give the dynamic power dissipation. So the total power dissipation is Dynamic power dissipation plus static power dissipation. Next, let us see what is static power dissipation and what are the sources of static power dissipation in a detailed manner. So, first, static power dissipation means it is mainly due to the leakage power. That is, it is the leakage power caused by the transistor which is not completely turned off. If the transistor is in partial on state means then definitely there will be static power dissipation. So you have to remember the important thing is due to the leakage current only the static power dissipation occurs. So first cause subthreshold leakage through off transistors. So we should understand by the title itself that is subthreshold leakage. So, after the threshold voltage only, the transistor should be switched on. But before the threshold voltage occurs, there will be some leakage. So, it is called as sub-threshold leakage through off transistor. So, that is called leakage current, sub-threshold leakage current. Then, second one is gate leakage through gate dielectric. We know in the gate, there is a polysilicon. Then, below that, we are having gate oxide, which is nothing but an insulating material. Then below that we are having our substrate. So it acts as a channel. So, so this acts as a capacitor, parallel plate capacitor. So the gate polysilicon acts as one parallel plate and uh, here the substrate acts as another parallel plate. In between the two parallel plates we are having the gate oxide. So depending upon the thickness of the gate oxide, the charges will be tunneling through the gate oxide. Right, so if the thickness of the gate oxide is very thin means then definitely more number of charges will tunnel through the gate oxide. So this leakage is called as gate leakage through gate dielectric. 
the next one is junction leakage from source or drain diffusions so if you are having source or drain then definitely it will act as a pn junction so if the junction is in reverse bias condition then there should not be no flow of current but there will be some leakage current so that leakage is called as junction leakage then fourth one is contention current in ratioed circuits so normally in an inverter we know there is a p mos transistor and n mos transistor if p mos transistor is in on state n mos transistor will be in off state similarly when n mos transistor in on state p mos transistor will be in off state but when both the transistors are in on state there will be a flow of current that is from uh, supply to the ground so this current is called as contention current so due to that a leakage will occur so that leakage is called as contention current leakage so these are the important causes for static power dissipation sub threshold leakage gate leakage junction leakage and contention current leakage next let us see the dynamic power dissipation so dynamic power dissipation the first cause is due to the switching activity of the device that means due to the charging and discharging of this capacitor so when the pmos transistor is on on state what happens there will be flow of current from vdd to ground so this will make charge inside this capacitor that is the capacitance gets charged then when the pmos transistor is in off state and nmos transistor is in on state the charge discharges through the nmos transistor so due to this charging and discharging action there will be power dissipation so that power dissipation is called a switching power dissipation this is mainly due to the switching capacitor activity present in the circuit so p switching is equal to alpha c vdd square into f this is the switching power formula alpha is the activity factor c is the capacitance vdd is the voltage supply voltage and f is the frequency if we reduce these factors then definitely the switching power can be reduced then the next cause for dynamic power dissipation is the short circuit power so short circuit power means here you can see the transition from uh, high to low so if the time taken for the transmission is very high means then during this transition time both the transistors will be in on state so there is a direct path from supply to ground so due to this there will be power dissipation so that power dissipation is called as short circuit power dissipation so dynamic power dissipation is nothing but the sum of short circuit power dissipation and switching power dissipation i hope you all have understood the basics of power dissipation that is static power dissipation and dynamic power dissipation so if you like this video kindly subscribe my channel and share with your friends thank you